Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nelson's Corner, Episode 16, Part 7, continuing with the card game engine. This video, I believe Nelson's going to be wrapping up the last of our pre-game implementation that needs to get in place before we can start taking a closer look at, I think you're wanting to start with the Boo language and getting some cards in place. Am I correct, Nelson? Yeah. All right. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, this final part of the pre-game implementation in place. Alrighty, so yes. How we're going to be doing this is the first um, stuff that we're going to be loading from is going to be JSON files. And the way I'm going to be writing those JSON files is in the console app, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called data. I'm going to create another folder called cards or card. And then within this, I'm going to have um, every the set represented with the, the three letter set. Um, character abbreviation things. So, for mm -hmm. example, Zen for Zendikar. Okay. Then in data, I'm also going to have a dex fo a dex folder, and cards is going to have. So a all so all of these different card sets are are always identified with a, a three character. Yes, there's a three character identification for every uh, set that okay. we can possibly represent. Cool. I just did not know that. All right, continue. Um, so our in the root of our cards is going to be our first collection. And that's just going to be a collection.json file. So what this is going to be is it's going to be just, I mean, we've talked, have we talked at all about the JSON format yet? Yeah, I asked you what it was and you showed us a brief example. Of a, yeah, a very brief example of format. Okay, so we're going to define a structure here with the curlies. And then as for the ID, we're going to go ahead and generate a new GUID. So do that a few times, go down to the better format, um, then copy that. That way, yeah. Uh, huh? Why, what, are, what, is, what are the options with goods? It's the first time I've seen that, that dialogue. Oh, I've this is just a... Them before. This so is just, do you want to talk us through that a bit? Do you know what a GUID is? I know what it is. It's a unique ID. Right. Um, the GUID, uh, Create GUID tool in Visual Studio is accessible from Tools Create GUID. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows you to just, there's just really common formats of defining GUIDs. Like, for example, this would might be used for, um, I think this is for COM, and this is used for another random Visual Studio language thing. Here's a code snippet for um, uh, C Sharp, for example. Here's the registry format. Here's an attribute, um, a, a .NET attribute format. It's all the same GUID. It's just it allows you to predefine common formats of present, representing them. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to use the registry format because that's the cleanest. So then I nuke the uh, curlies off of it. And then it's going to have a card providers um, array. And within that array, we're going to have card providers, which are going to be structures. And so the type is going to be a fully qualified type to a um, assembly and um, class. So, <laughs> um, well, yes. And then on a, in addition to the type, then we can also pass in any number of arguments that get serialized down to that read-only dictionary that we saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I might have a type for card game dot playing dot boo dot boo file system provider comma. Remember, this is the the class, the fully qualified class name. Mm -hmm. After the comma is going to be the um, assembly, and then I'm going to say path is going to be data cards. Something like that. Does that make sense? It does to yeah. me. Yeah. And the, and the path is automatically um, taken Relative. from the current. Yeah. Uh, in, can in you, the use, you use dot dot format and so forth? You can. In the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a introduce a um, tilde slash, which is a convention used in ASP.NET that defines the the root of where the um, the root of the application or oh. whatever. But right now, it's just going to be relative to the assembly. We're not going to worry about pathing. It'll just all work out for us, just magically. Mm -hmm. So here's our card game collection. And so basically, it's telling the boot file system provider to load all the cards and data slash cards. And so, for example, what's a card going to look like? Um, 
I haven't really settled on a um, complete syntax for how cards are going to look, look like yet, but they can really look like anything. Like, for example, I might have a forest1. It's not going to be a CS file. It's going to be a .boo file. And it's going to be something like uh, basic land forest, and then comma, a GUID that defines the card. Well, I was going to... Uh... Uh, and uh, presumably these, uh, you, you're just uh, creating these goods by hand for now? Or is you going to literally, for each one, have to go up to tools? I actually was just thinking about that a few minutes ago. I'm probably going to write like a, like quite a, a lot of cards. Yeah, I'm going to write a plugin. Well, what I'm, uh, what I'm really going to do, once we get the format settled down, we actually go to implement all the cards we want. I'm going to get a database from uh, probably Magic Workstation, pick out all the cards that I want to import, and then have that data, which will be represented in a CSV file, have that pre-generate um, class stubs for every single card. Mm. Yeah. And then, so this is what it's going to look like, and then set, zen, and um, color, green, and so on. So, and then for like a creature, like let's say we have a an awesome creature dot boo. It'll look something like creature awesome creature. Um, get a GUID for it, and then it's going to be like a color green. I don't know. Casting cost, two colorless, two green, uh, strength, uh, three, five, and so on. I've lost visuals. Hmm? Oh, no, there it comes. Sorry, it took a bit, uh, it was just a bit of lag. All right. And then um, on top of this, remember, every single card is usually going to be two classes, uh, the iCard definition and the iCard runtime. So what I'm thinking for the runtime is I'm going to be writing this DSL that's going to look something like Runtime DSL, uh, domain specific language. Just uh, as, because Boo is so incredibly, ridiculously, stupidly flexible, we can. <laughs> Sorry, that was that's great. a precise description term. Yes, um, we can make the syntax look like however we want to, virtually within reason. So, for example, I could have something like this. So, like awesome creature. Let's say whenever awesome creature enters the battlefield, um, target player loses the game. Uh, so we can say, like, on enters battlefield E for event, and if E dot um, card ID equals R card ID, then go ahead and say owner dot opponent dot lose. Something like that. So we're going to have this little DSL that responds to these game events. But a language that's very specific for our, our domain, our problem that we're solving for. Right. And this will turn into like what could be represented in the C sharp class as a class that implements the I event handler of type enters battlefield and has all this mm -hmm. code in it and mm -hmm. stuff. Um hmm. so yeah. So that's our collection. See Gavin Day, see why I'm why I'm really excited about really getting this thing pushed forward. There's a lot of really cool stuff that's gonna be covered. Mm. Hmm. Um, so as far as decks, uh, decks are going to be in originally, well, in this first format, we're going to be just using JSON again. Um, so deck1.json um, is going to be a JSON object. Of course, decks are going to be uniquely identifiable. Uh, then we're going to have the detail structure. So name is going to be deck1. And then we're going to have cards. And the cards are really just going to be structures that have a count. So let's say we want 10 for us. Mm -hmm. We'll say 10, and then we'll say collection ID is going to be our collection. Our card ID is going to be our forest. And then so on. And then we'll do a comma, and let's say we want five of the awesome creatures. So let's just take his um, GUID and dump him in the card ID. So that's what decks are going to look like, at least in this particular format. Again, I, I'm trying to build the system format of non-specific. Uh, um, non non-specific, yes. 
Um, I, I almost replaced agnostic with obnoxious for some reason <laughs> in my head. Um, yes, so this is our deck format. Any questions about how you use it? And it's very straightforward. No. Seems to work so far. Cool. Okay, so finally, the last thing we need to do is we want all of these files to go ahead and be dumped inside of our uh, binary or our bin folder um, when we build. So I'm just going to select all these uh, individual files, go to properties, and say, get it out of my way, and say copy if newer. Copy if newer. So now when I build, it'll dump all these stuff, preserving the uh, structure of the files, the folders. Yeah. Okay, so now we have this, um, and this managed to match up perfectly with what I had already intended to do, um, except for this is data card, and that's data decks. And so finally we can implement the load collection from JSON file and the load deck from JSON file. Sweet. Hey, do you, we, uh, do you want to, how much code is that? It's some code. I didn't know if Jason wanted to split the video. Oh no, there. we're only we're only eleven minutes in. We're still at the beginning. Oh, yeah, oh okay. I lose track. <laughs> Seems like hours. <laughs> no, but um, that's cool. I just wanted to check. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and create a new namespace called extensions, and inside this namespace, we're going to have a collection loading extensions class, who's going to be static, and he's simply going to be an extension method on. Actually, I'm going to write two, two extension methods. We're going to have load collection from JSON, which is going to take, uh, or which is going to be extension on the iCard game, or card game environment, sorry. And it's going to take a string JSON. And then we're also going to have a um, indentation issue. I don't know how that happened. Um, we're also going to have a iCard collection, load collection from JSON file, which is going to take an iCard game environment as what it's extending, and then a path. And then we're going to say if not file bring in system IO, exists path, throw a new arg file not found exception. Um, Otherwise, go ahead and spool up a new stream reader, taking in path, and then he's simply going to defer back to load collection from JSON um, that path up uh, that SR read to end. So yeah, does that work for everybody? Mm-hmm. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and use the awesome NuGet, which is one of Microsoft's great successes in the last while. Search for JSON, and I'm going to go ahead and add JSON.net um, from Newtonsoft.json. So now that I have that library, I can go ahead and access the JSON convert static class. And there's different ways we can do this. Um, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to write a little POCO that I'm going to deserialize into. Um, alternatively... What? You're uh, going to write a, a POCO? Yes. What, which would be what? A plain old CLR object. Which would be what? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, think of a POCO as... Uh, it's just a class. That's all okay. it is. It's a class that doesn't really extend anything or have any framework ties or special attributes. or It's just a normal looking class. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to deserialize into a class that I'm about to write. Alternatively, you can also use the uh, dynamic, um, uh, uh, the DLR with the uh, dynamic type in C Sharp um, that is also supported by this library. But I'm going to start by writing that class that I'm going to deserialize into. 
called collection object. And he's just going to have <coughs> two So notice, importantly, um, that this matches up uh, exactly to our collection.json file. So if we look at them, you'll see the ID matches up, and it's the same type mm -hmm. as a GUID. And then the card providers matches up, too, because the, the Newtonian, New, Newtonsoft or whatever, um, JSON deserializer, knows how, n understands how to process I enumerables and I dictionaries and all that cool stuff. So it's going to know exactly natively how to stuff this data into, into this that. property. So to do that, all I have to do is say collection data equals JSON serializer dot, or sorry, JSON convert. JSON convert dot to serialize object and then as a generic argument pass in a collection object and then as an actual argument pass in the JSON that we're parsing. Mm -hmm. Next step is we're going to instantiate our new factory. And then we're going to say factory set ID collection data dot ID. And then we're going to say for each provider argument in collection data dot card providers. This is going to look a little bit funky, actually, the way that I'm going to do this. But basically what I'm doing is I'm going to um, uh, treat this as the arguments dictionary. Then I'm going to yank out this type. And then I'm going to leave everything else as the arguments. And if it's above one, I'm going to pass it in. Otherwise, I'm not. If that makes sense. Strictly above. What? Uh, never mind. Carry on. It'll, it'll become clear. Okay. So we're going to say if provider arguments dot uh, contains key. If it doesn't contain the type key, then go ahead and throw a new argument exception saying missing type property in card provider arguments. I'm not convinced you've got your slashes and quotation marks. The Looks right. Yeah, they're right. Oh, sorry, yes, there's escapes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... It's 420 syndrome. Yes, I understand. Get another <laughs> drink of coffee. <laughs> That's not the problem. <laughs> okay, so if this makes sense... We're yanking out the type mm -hmm. name if it exists and then we're removing it out of that dictionary. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing var provider type equals type dot get type type name. Type name. Semi. Funny, funny you could type type name. Um, and then we're going to say if provider type is null, throw new, I don't know, argument exception. Sure. Um, type not found. Type. Oh, what don't you like? Expression is always null. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why ReSharp is awesome. Because it detected that I was saying if provider type is null, then print this out. Well, obviously, type provider is always going to be null because it's only going to get here by saying yeah, it's, if null. it's null. Yeah. Um, that was the wrong thing. I was supposed to say type name. Okay, so then we're going to say if provider arguments.count is greater than zero, and, and this is going to be nasty, but this is how reflection is with .NET. Well, it's not that bad. Compared to Java reflection, ugh. Uh, provider type dot get constructor, and then we're going to pass in an array of types. And the type we're going to be passing in is, of course, our I read only dictionary of type string string. And then equals null. Then throw a new argument exception saying type does not contain a constructor. 
that can handle additional arguments. So does this exception make sense? I'm just uh, running through the through the my, myself out of the uh, spiral of that second line of line 39 there. I'm going to go ahead and just actually just take this factor as a variable and say um, uh, type contains argumented CTR. Okay, does that make more sense? Oh, and yeah. Uh, hold on, it's backwards now. <laughs> there. So if the provider arguments, if the existing arguments mm. after we've yanked out the type argument, if that's greater than zero and the type doesn't contain an argumented CTR, then go ahead and throw an exception. Right. And then we also want to basically do the opposite. We want to say else if um, provider arguments dot counts equals zero. Eh. Sorry about that. Um, and provider type dot get constructor. I think that we can just do new type zero equals null. Throw a new argument exception. Type does not contain a default constructor and no additional arguments were provided. I'm really sticky on um, on error handling for this in particular because as far as debugging, because these are things that are basically handwritten. As far yeah. as debugging these, I don't I don't want that to ever really be a problem. So that's why I have so many um, checks, sanity checks in place. Okay, and then finally, at the end of this, we do factory dot add card provider, um, provider type, and then provider arguments. And of course, that doesn't work because we need to instantiate a new read-only dictionary with provider arguments. And then finally, we say collection equals factory dot create card collection. Say that dot add collection collection. Remember that is our art card game engine. And then return it out for whatever purpose you might need it for. Why well, this and that thing I find slightly confusing. Well, it's an extension method. See, watch this. Because I wrote this method, this will now not work because I did something wrong. Load. It didn't work before. Oh, yeah, because I'm not instantiating this. There we go. There we go. Now this works. Although I'm, in, I'm calling this on environment, and environment is of type card game environment, he doesn't actually contain a method load collection from JSON file. That's being added onto him by this extension method. Does that make sense? I think it's just so, cause, yeah, I hadn't, re this is the keyword. this, it's not this and that. It's you and your stuff and things and this and that. No, I, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was thing, just this. this. is required for the extension method, but that could be hamburger. But Nelson well, loves this Can you give that a that. descriptive name? I prefer that because um, it, it started in JavaScript where I had to alias out this when, I'm go when I swap scopes. And I just find that makes more sense because it's like this, except for it's not. <laughs> yeah, I actually bugged him about this once a long time ago. Well, I'm going to bug him again about it because it's silly. Well, I'm fine with it. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I get used to it. <laughs> okay, so as far as like the uh, the the factory interface um, or the factory card collection factor, now you kind of see why it's uh, beneficial because we have this. All we have to do is you know call that and then call that, and we're done. And everything outside of those two method calls is is the um, the infrastructure of the actual code. If we hadn't have created that factory class, we would have to do all of this code every single time we wanted to create a new collection location that things could be stored from, like XML or whatever. Mm -hmm. So does this code all make sense? How you feeling, Gavin? I have to, I'm done there. It seems to make sense. It will make sense when I go through and type it in. Okay. And, and listen to it again. Okay. I'm, I'm fairly sure of that. Okay. Well, it's really well, again, at the end of the day, Nelson, just like I've said before, these are not beginner C-sharp 
videos. Right. Well, this is this why I'm not hanging Nelson up on every little bit like the this and that thing. I only brought that up because it came back to it. Well, this it, this it, is the frustrating thing, though, real fast. Without any arg- without any exception throwing or sanity checks, that's what the code looks like. Yeah. So, <laughs> I just want to throw out the most of the messiness of this method is our sanity checks. Well, no, I appreciate that. You're gonna, you know, you, you're gonna want it there if when when if when the time comes. Right. You're gonna want to know exactly where and which of the 800 cards that you are in, instantiating. Yeah, which one doesn't throwing work? an error? Yeah. Marvelous. So, is is there? Are we ready to? What are we moving well, to? Now we have to load up decks. But actually, well, no. Let's just do decks first. So now we have our deck loading extensions, and this is going to actually look a lot very similar to our previous um, our previous code, except for it's going to be a lot shorter. Fortunately, um, we're going to have a public static i deck load deck from Jason. This card game engine or environment that string Jason. And we get this weird, stupid indentation issue, which I don't know what's up with that. And then we're going to have another overload for uh, load, or not an overload, but another method, load deck from JSON file, this CGE, that string file, which is going to pretty much look exactly like it, like the other one. So if not file dot exists, file throw new file not found exception cannot load deck at file blank not found uh, file and then using var star equal new stream reader uh, pass in file and then just say return load deck from json that uh, sr read to end that's good. Okay. So the the biggest challenge here is actually we have to represent a tiny, a tad bit more complex data model. Um, so we have our ID and our details, but we also have these cards, which are themselves um, their own little .NET types. So I'm going to go ahead and create two private classes. One is going to be deck card object, and th- this is going to be what is here. So it's going to have a public int count, get our setter, public int, uh, GUID collection ID, get our setter, public GUID card ID, get our setter. And then we also have a private class deck object. <laughs> Whenever I type code like this out with a bunch of uh, properties and stuff, I just feel it just so sorry for people who write in Java because every single one of these lines would have to be a field and two methods. Right. <clears throat> God. All right. Then we'll have a public deck details. I think I just turned everybody down. Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, details getter setter. I enumerable of uh, deck card objects, and we're going to call these cards because that cards, or cards, this matches up with this. Mm -hmm. And um, also note that this is why I like the the JSON deserializer um, a lot, especially more than the nasty built-in serializers and deserializers of the .NET framework, is because this deck card object, again, is just a POCO. And when we, if we, or not, not this deck card object, um, this, this deck details is really just a POCO. And like I said before, as we start and add more and more properties to this, none of our code is going to have to change. Because the JSON to serializer will instantly know how to handle the new properties. And all we have to do is add another comma and then, I don't know, create it at, and then put in our new field or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just wanted to point that out real fast. Um, so now we have our deck details, so I'm going to close this out now that we've successfully modeled this JSON file to these uh, .NET types. And then basically we're going to start with saying deck data equals JSON convert 
dot deserialize objects object dec object JSON. And we say factory equals new dec factory. Then we're going to pass in that. Remember, deck factory requires a reference to iCard game environment because he's going to be actually looking for cards as we add them. Yeah. Um, so that's why we're passing that into it. And then we're going to say factory set ID, uh, deck data dot ID, factory set details, deck data dot details. And then we're going to say for each for card in data cards or in uh, deck data cards. We're going to say factory dot add card, card collection ID, card card ID, card count, and then we're going to say our deck equals factory dot create deck, and then we're going to say that add deck, that add deck, deck, and then we're going to say return deck. Cool. Yay. Okay, um, actually, I kind of do want to do something really fast, uh, just for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and create uh, our first card provider. Okay. And what that's going to be is it's going to be a .NET assembly provider. So it's just going to load up the .NET assembly using reflection and then loop through all the types in it, find every single type that's an iCard definition, instantiate it, and return it. So it's a fairly simple provider. And then I'm going to use that to prove that all of our deck card stuff is working properly. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and in the engine, I'm going to create a uh, providers namespace. And I'm going to call them card providers. And then I'm going to create a um, assembly card provider. And just to show you, this is also a good example, before we get into the boo stuff, which is also going to be a lot of information to take in, just to see how to create a provider really fast, given our interface we just created. So we go ahead and uh, card definition provider, then implement his single member. And then our assembly card provider is actually going to take in an I read only dictionary of string string for arguments and he's going to initialize him as a parameter um, and then I'm just going to throw in another sanity check if if not arguments contains key um, assembly throw a new argument exception assembly card provider requires argument assembly to function. And then so his uh, load definitions, all he's going to do is he's going to go ahead and load in that assembly into the current app domain. So it's going to be um, app domain dot, or sorry, it's just going to be assembly dot load. Assembly dot load um, file. And then arguments assembly. And that should throw a nice little exception if it's not found or proper or whatever. Um, and then it's going to say uh, ASM equals that. And it's going to go ahead and loop over um, sem.get types where t type of i card definition is assignable from t. Then go ahead and instantiate it and return it. So we're basically just going to say yield return activator dot create instance type. And of course that doesn't work because we have to cast it to an iCard definition. And what do you want? Uh, whatever. Yeah, that looks ugly though. Well, no, it looks a little bit nicer, I guess. I wanted to avoid it because I thought it would be a tad more complicated than it turned out to be, but that's actually, that's fine. Actually, might as well just do this. In mind. There you go. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah. So that's a really simple card provider. And now what we can go ahead and do is um, let's go ahead and just create a new uh, project real fast, just a temporary um, project that we'll be nuking soon-ish after th this example is done. Test cards. And test Got a cards. test project. Yeah, but this is different. 
bit. He's going to reference engine and base. And then let's go ahead and make a card. So let's go ahead and have an I. Um, let's go ahead and keep that same convention. So we can do Zen. And then uh, forest one. And have him implement I card definition. And then implement all his members as automatic properties. And then go ahead and write a constructor that sets all these stuff, all these. So as far as the um, the uh, ID, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and use these IDs um, so I don't have to change the deck, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the name is going to be Forest One, I guess. And that's all I'm going to do for that guy. And then I'm also going to create an awesome creature, which is also going to be an iCard definition. Uh, not like that. And you see why I want to make a DSL out of this, because it's oh, yeah. a lot of obnoxious code that I don't want to type every single time to create a new card. But then again, I don't want to do it in a different way that doesn't lend me the flexibility of having one class per card, or two classes per card. Uh, not, there we go. Okay, so here's our .NET assembly. Um, does that, that's all good? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and tell him to build... Actually, no. I'm just going to say references, add reference uh, test cards. So that test cards is in the binary folder. Um, make sure copy local is true, which it is. And then I'm going to change this collection, .json. Instead of loading in this non-existent type, I'm going to load in a type that does exist, which is going to be our assembly card provider. And then his assembly is going to be testcards.dll. And then also we need to specify the, um, the assembly that the provider is in, which is going to be card game engine and so if everything is right this should just work what, um, it, what wait, wait. Ah. Sorry, it disappeared before you finished typing but you see what's going on okay we're no longer dealing with these uh these boo yeah files. yeah i so say it's just literally it, but by the time you'd finished speaking and typing the screen had already, uh, I think it might be lag. Oh. Okay, and then let's just go say for each of our card in deck one dot cards console. Ah, I hate it when I. I've run this before. I, hate, I, I do this all the time. I, I make a project called console, which means when I do console dot. It thinks I'm referencing the local namespace right. of console instead of system <laughs> console. It's just obnoxious. Um, let's just go ahead and write line out card dot uh, definition name just to prove that everything is working. And just because I haven't executed this code in a while, it's probably going to fail spectacularly. But just no. the heads up. Yay! Absolute path. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, to load in an assembly, you have to use an absolute path. So I'm going to say path equals path dot combine app domain base directory. Sweet. Ooh. Wait a second. I think that just worked. <laughs> Looked like it. There we go. I am honestly very impressed. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Flawless, with the exception of the one thing, but flawless. Sweet. So, yeah, so that's that's it so far. I mean, does everything look cool? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Marvelous. So, yeah, so now basically it's just a matter of adding additional providers. Um, so adding a boo provider or a uncompiled C-sharp provider that instead of having a, a compiled assembly like this, we actually have .cs files outside of it, but we're going to be focusing on boo 
primarily just because we can write our own little DSL in Boo. Mm -hmm. But remember, these are just classes. Right. And so if we wanted to, um, basically at this point, if we wanted to start up the game, really all we're going to have to do is say card dot uh, definition dot create runtime. Just say, you know, for var i equals zero i smaller than card count i plus plus, and then just card definition dot create runtime, and this will create the runtime representations of each card, because the i card definitions are an abstract factory. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sweet. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring this video to a close. Now, your thought, Nelson, in the starting with the next video, you want to spend a little bit of time going over the Boo language, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, as, yeah, much yeah. As, I, as much as I can. As, yeah, that, that, and that's fine. And that's fine. We'll we'll discuss why you're kind of grunting and whining about it in that video. But this, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Excellent, excellent job, Nelson. I figured you were going to be spending a little bit more time hunting for bugs. I'm very impressed. So we will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot, everyone.